Hello guys and gals and welcome uh, to another episode of uh, Unique Items. Today we're going to be going over a necromancer specific item and that is the Blood Moon Breaches. The Blood Moon Breaches is this new unique pair of pants that they added and it does have a special chance of dropping from Uber Duriel. If so, if you do happen to farm Uber Duriel, you may see some of these Blood Moon Breaches drop on the ground for you. Um, now the Blood Moon Breaches um, have some pretty amazing effects so let's go over them together. First off, um, it does have the while injured, your potion also grants 45% movement speed for two seconds, which, you know, eh, the, druid, the necromancer the necromancer does have issues with movement speed, so I can't be entirely mad at that, although I would prefer the barrier. Um, it also has a nice little HP roll on it of 605 to 1310, um, and 8 to 3.3% damage reduction from enemies affected by curse skills, which is a really good, uh, because it has two at least two defense modifiers, which is not bad. Um, it does roll between 6.5 and 12.6% damage reduction from enemies that are cursed, though. Uh, it also has plus three ranks to all of your curse skills, which means that when you take your curses out, um, they're going to go from level one, if you only put one point in them, to level four, which is pretty crazy. Um, so you're going to be looking at some pretty decent uh, curse levels on the effects. Um, also, I have actually confirmed that the curses that are cast by this do actually get access to the bonuses. Um, and I can show you that in a little bit. Um, it also gives two ranks to amplify damage, which is a really nice skill, because that means any monster that's cursed is going to take additional damage from you, which is very, very nice. So all in all, in general, the, this is just like an absolutely amazing uh, pair of pants, because not only does it allow you to get an additional damage bonus of 70 times increased overpower damage from as long as enemies are cursed by you, um, it also auto-curses auto enemies, essentially, through your minions. So as your minions are attacking, they will automatically curse monsters. And I can kind of show you how this works. So let's go outside of town real quick. Let's find a couple monsters to wail on. And, uh, and I'm going to show you how I know that the curses are actually your curses and that they actually maintain your um, passive buffs. So I'm going to cast uh, Army of the Dar Dead here. And as you watch the counter go down, what you're going to notice is occasionally you're going to see the counter go down faster than it otherwise normally would. Um, I have Abhorrent Decrepify, which is an ability that has a 15% chance to reduce your active cooldowns by one second. So what this does is, is that anytime the monsters are attacking one of the monsters, or one of my minions is attacking one of the monsters that is cursed by Decrepify, um, they're going to occasionally reduce the cooldown of the ability. Um, this is something that you actually can see happen. Of course, it doesn't happen all the time since it's a lucky hit proc, so you have to kind of watch for it. And, uh, and you have to keep Army of the Dead on cooldown so that when it does happen, you can actually see it. Uh, occasionally, it will happen multiple times in a row, and you will actually see it go like... Doo -doo 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 and go down multiple times. Um, right now, still haven't seen it happen yet. Now, you can actually see the curse actually taking place on the monster. So when you when you attack the monster, you'll see the curse go under their feet. Um, it's a, uh, a pretty simple effect. That one right there is cursed. He is cursed, uh, and so forth and so on. And, uh, and the stronger the monster, the better the effect, obviously, because you can get multiple curses, they attack multiple times. Some of these weaker monsters, the ones that die ridiculously fast, one thing I've noticed is, is that despite the fact that the curse um, actually does have a pretty decent proc chance of 5% right now, uh, but it does roll between 3 to 7% chance to curse enemies, um, this means that you and I just accidentally clicked on the portal. Man, I love doing that. It's my favorite activity, apparently. It generally doesn't proc very quickly on monsters that are going to get destroyed anyway. So if you're walking through the monsters and they're just getting annihilated from existence, there's a very good chance that you're not going to see the effect happen. However, when you get into those uh, fights where you have multiple monsters that are obviously much stronger, elites and so forth, that are actually posing some kind of challenge, that's when you really start to see the... Um, the curses happen more, um, as well as the the cooldown reductions happen more. Uh, let's see if we can find one of the more tanky tonky monsters to show off how this works. Of course, I do have to have the pants on, which uh, I've made that mistake before. I was trying to show off them before, and I was like, oh, it's not working. Why is it not working? Hmm. 
Ah, here's a nice big juicy pack up here. Let's take on this juicy pack. I'm not ready yet. Ah, uh, there we go. That's how it just happened right there. So if you, uh, if you, I don't know, if you have to go back and actually look at it frame by frame, but basically what you're seeing there is you're seeing it's going like one, two, three, four, and then all of a sudden what happens is it goes like, it goes like four, five, six, right, real fast, um, and that's basically the cooldown reduction happening from the abhorrent to crevify. I don't have any other form of cooldown reduction like that. So watching the cooldown reduction from the Decrepify actually happen confirms that it is actually casting Decrepify. Um, and I've also noticed the healing from the Abhorrent Iron Maiden, which is what I'm using on this one. But you do have to put some points into the passives to actually make them work. So if you're going to use Blood Moon Breaches, you're probably going to want at least one point um, the passives that you want to have access to with those curses. Uh, that way you get access to those curses uh, on the, uh, you know, obviously when you need them. Now, um, me personally, I don't want to have the curses on my bar, and I don't want to have to spam them all the time. Um, especially both of them. I don't really want to have both of them on my bar either, uh, because they just take up too much space. I don't like it. The, um, the Blood Moon Breaches offer you the ability to have the curses and the benefit of having the curses without actually putting the curses on your bar, which I think is probably the coolest thing of the uh, Blood Moon Breaches. So if you want to actually get both of the effects of those, you know, it's it's a, it's a decent choice. Um, you could also potentially use something like the 50 times damage multiplier for shadow damage if you have both Decrepify and Iron Maiden on the monster at the same time, which is something that I've been utilizing um, along with the Blood Moon Breaches because it seems to cast both curses, and when it casts both curses, I end up with the 50 times multiplier. Um, it works on bosses, it works on elites, it works on all sorts of things. So, you know, I, when I'm fighting a particularly tough monster and all of my minions are attacking with a 5% chance to cast the curses, I inevitably always have both curses on the boss or the monster at any given time. Um, another interesting uh, alternative, though, that I was thinking for this particular build besides that is maybe just going with Frostburns. I think Frostburns could be an interesting choice, too. Um, I'm not entirely sure which one I want to do, to be perfectly honest. I guess we'll have to play around with that in the future. Um, but I think Blood Moon Breaches are going to be um, a main staple for this particular character. It also has some uh, flavor text. Let's read the flavor text as well. A naturally occurring curiosity, the Blood Moon persists as a sign of woe for the most superstitious Zacharum faithful. Children born under it are often considered cursed and cast out, lest it spread. Mm, lest it spread. Ugh. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when I'm just spending some time to confirm for you guys that it is actually casting Necromancer Curses. And uh, as always, uh, keep watching.